let's be honest, she's getting a little decrepit. I think it's time for Big Baby to head out, and we ended up with an offer, so we're going to take it. So if you've watched the channel in the past, this is my plow truck that unfortunately some high quality people when they left this property decided to put some sand in the engine, they decided to put water in the distributor cap, and then on top of that a squirrel got in and it ate the injection wiring harness for at least two, maybe three of the cylinders. So this got parked about two years ago, and it was running at the time, but on a rather questionable basis. So let's trade one truck that doesn't run for another kind of a truck that doesn't run. So this is a club car, carry all. It has a Kawasaki underneath the back bed that spent the last year and a half being rather temperamental and now doesn't want to run at all. The bed is entirely aluminum frame with side rails and everything. We'll get into the engine in a little while, but it's a good base for us to work with. Really lightweight with the aluminum stuff that's in it and in really good condition. So it ought to be great for running around the yard and working on all the projects we need to do. Testing if battery is just dead, take one. Nope. Now what was it you, you said earlier it would do? It was cranking over. Oh. It just wouldn't fire unless you sprayed ether. What if you put it in reverse? You said it did like a buzzer? Oh, that is annoying. Yes it is. Okay, that needs to die. That's coming out of there somehow. We're going to see if this will kick over enough to engage the Fisher pump in underneath, raise the plow gear. The chances that the transmission are going to engage are slim, but we'll see what happens. And this is old school Fisher plow gear in underneath here with this style pump. For those that are wondering why I just don't hot wire 12 volts to the pump, it's because it's the old school style. All right, here we go. We got you guys off to the side because I don't want to run you over potentially, but we're going to see if it'll at least fire up. I gave it a punch, it should have kicked right up. Okay. No, nope, never mind. It's got fluid. Pump weak. Pump's weak. Alright, we're gonna give it one hell of a pump and see if it'll go.
Would you like to know how to hotwire just about every 90s Ford pickup truck ever made? All right. If you take and you drop this off and you grab this assembly right here, this is your slide. Get you guys up here. This is your slide. If you slide forward, that's your start the ignition. If you slide back to this point, that's your off. And if you slide it back towards where my thumb is, that's your accessory. All you gotta do is where the key is you got to break the ignition lock that's inside of there and at that point you can start it without the brakes without anything you just slide that forward and hold it and it starts it i'm gonna see if i can get this on camera but we came out here and there is something splashed all over in this area and the transmission wouldn't kick over that, covered in icky and leaking everywhere, is the transmission line for this thing. So, yeah, it's not going to go anywhere, so we're just going to get the winch out. But, as usual, this little booster pack is just giving it all it's got. I love these things. They're actually sending me an upgraded version, which I'll have in video for you guys. But I'll post a link for this one down below. Well, there we go. There's where the tires were, and this is why it wouldn't come out. That's my forearm deep into there. That one is probably four inches. That one was muckied down to about six. And that one there is even deeper on that side. So there's that. But it's moving now. Got to get the cinder blocks out of it because somebody needs a new fire pit. Well, as Mark drops everything, attempting to find the last of the ratchet straps to tie this down with, it's all loaded up, strapped down, ready to go, trying to figure out getting this long monstrosity to fit on the last of this. And as you can see, the carry-all already has Jesse sitting approval. What do you think? Do you want to drive this thing? Drive? No. But it's keeping the sun off of me, so it's okay. The priorities, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen to it, but it managed to make it here to Mark's. If you guys like, let me know you want to know a follow-up on what ended up happening to good old Big Baby. But... Time to go work on our project. You know, you guys ask me all the time, what do I do when I'm not working on lawn tractors? Well, I was moving about probably five tons worth of scrap steel today. And now, if I flip the camera, currently I'm the escort for this free mobile home trailer thing that was on Facebook and helping a buddy with moving it. So there you go. Everybody always asks, what else do I do? I do a lot. <laughs> I have friends. Friends need help. I show up. We get it done. Well, I've got the jug of cheap oil out because I know this machine was fully serviced and running about a year ago. But that worries me. I don't know. We'll put some oil in. We'll find out what's going on, but I know this was running a year ago, and it's got no oil in it, and I know the guy who worked on it previously definitely would have had it topped off, so that worries me. So maybe we'll find out what the oil filter is on this and double check that, but somewhere it ate all the oil in a year of use. This has a weird camera doesn't pick it up well but it's like a weird yellowish green color to the bottom of it i think we're gonna siphon this gas out and start with fresh known good gas as you can see this is the apple juice that came out of there 
And in the bottom of it, we can see it's got a little bit of diffused water, but it's really not that bad. I did a burn test with this and it seemed to burn off fine. My bet is it's probably that color from having some stable or something put in it. So we're going to burn that through the gas powered power wheel so that John can have well, there's a gallon and a half there, and I'm betting probably a gallon and a half there. So at three gallons worth of free gas, he can drive around for the next, like, four weekends for free. So I'm okay with that. Well, that's finishing draining. Let's see if we're at least at the point where we can push button start this thing. So... Here we go, let's see if it'll do something. There we go. And you can even see movement there, so the fuel pump should work. The sun's working against me as far as lighting goes, but we have the ignition set to the run position. The actual turn to start is not working, but I'm going to bet the kill side probably is still working because that usually seems to be how they rot out. Now, this is a weird unit in that the choke is actually this. That's choke. That's choke off. Choke. Choke off. So back here right now, we've got about a half a gallon of good gas. We've got some starter fluid. And we got that popped off and a push button. So let's see if I can come around this pole here. See if we can get some starter fluid in here. And of course it doesn't want to work upside down. And punch it. Sound like it almost abated it. Alright, well, let me put a booster pack on there and get you guys in a tripod so that I can run the throttle and we'll go from there. Here we go, we got our latest upgraded 6000 cranking amp booster pack. So we'll see how well this thing kicks this over. They've made a bunch of revisions to how these are set up, and I'm really glad that they did. Here we go. So let's give it some starter fluid. Now we'll put our hand, well actually, yeah, we'll put our hand over it and see if we can get it to kick. interesting it doesn't want to idle well it could be it's got junk in the carburetor could be the filter is pretty old and janky looking let's let's adjust the idle in just a little bit so it does have an idle at idle jet adjustment screw and it has an idle adjuster in here so let me grab a flathead and we'll monkey with that for a second. Alright, so we at least know that the ignition is working as far as 
the kill and not kill. So we're gonna bring the adjustment screw out a quarter of a turn to open the idle jet up a little. All right, let's punch it and see if it'll idle. Almost. So I'm gonna bring the throttle screw in just a little bit to bring the RPM that it should idle sitting at up just a little. Okay, gonna bring the idle screw out just a tiny bit more for the idle jet. Let's punch the gas pedal and see what it does now. Alright, so the carburetor I think is still being a little hateful. It'll idle for quite a while, but then it dies. So right here is the shifter. We're gonna try and start it in neutral, put it in first, uh, put it in forward and see if it'll go, I guess. All right, here we go. John just got home. Let's go see what he thinks of this. So, set that to the run position. Grab this and push the gas a little. There we are. Let's go show John. All right, you can turn around. What do you think? I traded Big Baby for it. It's in forward right now. Do you want to take it for a test drive? Okay. Okay, so the brakes on it are a little bit on the soft side. Okay, so you got to plan ahead on your braking. All right, so I'm going to sit right here. Let me zoom this out a bit. All right, go ahead. Okay, don't go full throttle till we hit the straightaway. Go down to Merrill's Field and go on the straightaway. All right, give her some. See what she'll do. <laughs> All right, go ahead and turn around. All right, so John's driving. Whoa, <laughs> this thing is very tippy. Off-road. Bottoms out on plenty of things. Definitely needs some suspension upgrades. What do you think, John? Is this worth it? Yes! Now you gotta help out with yard work. Thank you! <laughs>
All right, you want to see if you can make it around the house with it? Hi. All right, let me flip this. All right, go ahead and see if you can make it around the house. Where Big Baby was, there's a bunch of tire holes. Watch out. We're gonna hit the tree. Oh, you got a plan on that turn radius. Okay, now remember there's a drop off. Yep. You having fun? Yeah, it's a golf cart with slight extension. Alright, let's take it and let's go park it in the center of the driveway and do a walk around. Yep, yeah, this will work right here. Brakes. Yeah, see what I mean? They're kind of squishy. Yeah. Alright, so you got to make sure to put this in neutral. Like that. Okay. So now, if I hit the gas, see nothing happens. So that's your ignition off. You don't have to hit it right now. So, I don't know if you can see that cloud of smoke, but she's definitely eating oil. I'd say the rings in that poor thing are probably, probably hitting the end of their life. It's only 390 something cc, so something like a 420 upgrade would probably work out pretty good. These tires are gnarly, but as you can see, it has almost no ground clearance whatsoever. And actually, the suspension actually hangs out even lower. Yep, there we go. So I've retuned that idle jet twice now. It's just plain that engine is tired. We're gonna figure out a better place to set up and put push button. Haven't quite decided as far as that's concerned yet. But I think it'll get us started. It will at least give us a service truck that we can run around on. Now, one thing that I was thinking is I have an old lawn tractor dump cart. So I was debating the idea of the dump cart here and then maybe some sort of tow truck boom type idea, maybe made out of like an old engine crane or something, or maybe have the engine crane boom right about here so that you could drop down to the bed or lift up and have it extend out the rear. Not quite sure. You know, that's kind of all in the ballpark of maybes right now. But no matter what, it's going to let us get a ton of yard work done and do it a lot easier than a tractor with a trailer behind it. So I think it's going to work out good. What do you think, John? Heck yeah! Was the deal worth it? Yes! Alright, so you're still sad Big Baby's gone? Is this an okay replacement? Close enough. Close enough? It's not quite a Big Baby, but it but it's close enough? It needs a plow. I don't think we're going to put a plow on this. <laughs> With two-wheel drive and as, as low ground clearance as it is, I don't think it would plow very well. All right. Say bye-bye.